Hello friends, welcome to another video. In this video, we are going to see how we can import file browser in our PowerShell script. Why is that so important? You have seen in every script, this line is always be there and the path we have to specify manually, right? So uh, by mistake, let's suppose you run the script in PowerShell and you didn't change the path. So uh, you have the risk, right? Uh, on which computer you are running the script. So to avoid such kind of issues, we must use the file browser to select a text file or the CSV file where we have saved a computer list. So how to do that and how to enable that in our script? So generally, this is the script we always use, right? To make a browser uh, in file browser active in our PowerShell script, we have to use these three lines, okay? So these three lines is uh, important to make a file browser prompt and uh, to select the file on that. So how does this work, right? So generally to get a prompt, only these two lines are important. Okay, these two lines. Now let me uh, show you like how does it work. So if I run this script, it will prompt you for the file and you just have to select the file. And you can see here, we have got the reply okay, right? Now suppose I run the script again and now this time I don't select the file, I just hit cancel button and you can see I press the cancel button here. Okay, now if I want to run this file uh, through the PowerShell, how does this work, right? So let me give you the pause command here so it will be visible, okay? Uh, what is the file browser text? Okay, fine. Okay, if I run this with the PowerShell, see, it is giving the object like new object cannot find type and this is the open file dialog. So, it is giving the error. So, that is the reason we have to use this command add hyphen type. So, assembly name system dot window dot form. So, what is this? This is a dot net framework class that we are using here and because of this, we are getting a prompt in PowerShell as well. So this is the ISE, so that is the reason two line is sufficient for that. But whenever you are running a script in the uh, PowerShell, it is required. So let me give a pause here, okay? And let me run the script now, okay? The so same script. And you can see, now I have a prompt here, okay? Now there is no error and I selected the file and you can see here, okay. And if I press enter, it will exit the script, correct? So let me run it again. And you can see the prompt is there. If I click cancel, you can see, okay, I press the cancel button and you can press anything to continue. Okay, now you already got to know, right? These three lines are important to make a prompt on your PowerShell script. But now what if we select the file? Now, after that, what we have to do, right? So our PowerShell script know, okay, this is the text file that we have to use for the server's path or for the server list something okay so for that we have this script okay so what we are doing here so let me explain one by one here okay so whatever the prompt we are getting here okay so suppose i got this in a show dialog box right so let me hit enter here and let me run only this part. Like we have to see exactly what we are getting from this variable. If I run this, you can see here. So currently it is blank because uh, the file path you can see here. It is empty because we didn't select any file, right? So let me again run it and let me select the file this time. I want live PC text file. Okay, I selected that. Now what it is, okay? It have given the file name and file name have the full file path here. Correct? See, you can see here. Okay, so now what we have to do, we have to use this path for our get content variable. So suppose now here, I'll, I'll select here, create a new variable, file path is equal to this browser and what parameter we have to select here file name because it have the path okay so i'll use file name okay now we'll print again the file path here okay so 
let me run this again i select live pc and you can see it printed the path that it stored in that variable in which variable the file path okay now we have got the path now what we have to do we have to use the server's variable like you can just uh, give the any name to your variable so i'm giving servers is equal to get content from file path correct file path now we here we are getting only the path of that text file right but here we are getting the content from that file now how, how does it look okay so let me print the servers here at the end so we'll get let me delete this now it is not required if i run this okay and live pc and you can see here now this time it printed the content from this file path and this file path we got from the file browser file name and uh, because of the show dialog box it showed the dialog to select the file and this is the thing that we have selected to get the dialog box okay now uh, you got it right how it works but if you want to modify something during this file browser then there is some option you can modify that but basically if you are just using or selecting the file then you just have to use these three lines or maybe two additional line to get exactly to what you want okay and here we have some customization available now uh, we have gone a step further to identify what we have selected okay now what we are doing here let me explain to you let me clear the page okay now we are using the if statement okay now uh, suppose i want to select a file and after selecting the file i want to run some script okay so that is the one case and another case suppose i don't select anything then it should give me some error or it should exit the script okay now we have till here we have the same thing okay now file will have the file name or uh, the path of the file so something should be there if i select the file then only this uh, variable will be uh, will have the value if i don't select anything then it would be empty right so after that i am using the if statement if this file is not equal to like this will uh, if this is a empty then write warning file not selected please run the script again and select the file else the server's dollar server get content from this file okay and uh, you can just write something like whatever you want that we generally use from the for each statement and everything so let me show you here okay I selected the file and you can see here warning file selected okay press enter to continue okay so uh, we have successfully completed this step because our file got selected now here I run it again and I don't select anything and I cancel that and you can see here warning file not selected please run the script again and select the file it means our script is ending here if we are not selecting anything and if we are selecting anything then our script is running here and in between that you can use your script you can add additional parameter that you want to perform on the uh, on the list of server that you select and you can use this okay so uh, let me show you some example here okay uh, in the property like uh, the browser that we are selecting here new hyphen object we are using to get a prompt and there's there are some filters here okay so let me uh, explain you one by one so till this time if you want to skip this video to get only this four line for your script you can get it if you want to listen further then uh, i'll try to explain this additional parameter which is generally not required but you can modify that okay suppose i want to start my script so whenever the file browser will be open it should open with a specific directory then i can use that path here okay suppose if i run that script here uh, i want to run this one and you can see it started in the c drive script because my script is in uh, saved in that folder okay so let me enable this and uh, let me add some new folder okay i enter this path here 
and now let me run it again so earlier the file browser was open in this folder now it should open in a new folder okay you can see here now the path is with the new folder and the all the files are visible to me again i delete this part i del i'll delete the new folder and run the script again and you can see the file browser will start in the script only not in the new folder so let me add new folder again okay so this is the first parameter the another thing there is the initial directory another environment parameter where we can specify like a desktop folder because the path would not be same for everyone like the, if someone is using the script right but the desktop my documents will be the same so here we are using the environment variable uh, sorry uh, environment parameter and then here we are specifying okay desktop suppose you want to get like whatever the path is uh, path so i can enter in this field you can just type anything wrong here okay i'll type download okay and then i'll run the script let me clear this one okay it will give me error and it will show me okay you can select out of this box uh, from this option for your parameter okay so it will take to program my documents personal favorite startup so you can use anything any uh, folder path from here so i'll use the my documents okay now if i use my documents it is the correct uh, option so it won't give me error and it will directly start the script from my documents if i run this you can see here it started with the document if i specify here desktop and if i run the script it will open in a desktop you can see here so according to this you can use this initial directory uh, environment variable uh, to get a specific folder for your script okay so let me hide this as well now suppose you want to give a title okay so let me explain that so let me stop let me remove the pause button here i don't want okay uh, fine so now let me show you you can see here uh, there is no title for this uh, it is just showing open right this is a default behavior so if you want to customize that and if you want to give any title to your script you can just use the title parameter here and how you will use that you just enable the title is equal to select file to open or anything any message you can write here and if i run the script again you can see select file to open text here right so let me change it to something else select server list okay and if i run here you can see select server list correct so you can just customize this one if you want now another thing we are using the filter parameter here why we are using filter because there are so many things right so many files are there i just want to select specific the text file or the csv file so how can i do that right i have to use this filter variable parameter here and equal to here you can specify any name okay so there are two part uh, before the pipe after the pipe okay so uh, before the pipe whatever you will be used it will be visible in the drop down list so let me directly run this and you will understand that whatever we have specified here that will be visible during the file selection box and this is the type that you will be able to see that okay so just understand this different i have given here the server list okay you can you can specify anything there is no problem so let me run this and you will see the different here so earlier this line was till this here but now we have this drop down option okay and it have the character that we have specified here in the first part exactly same okay so let me cancel it and again i'll run uh, i'll show you something 
select file okay I'll, I'll give this and let me run it again and you can see here select file now but the different here is what I want to show you here that suppose okay let me delete this one okay if I run it right now it will only show the select file and what file should be visible to us that we will specify here okay so okay so we have an excel file here and we have a text file here so what I'll do will I'll just give the text file okay and now if I run the script it will only show me the text file and nothing else okay you can see here the excel file is gone if I want to add a excel file I just have to give the semicolon star dot xlsx and if I run the script again you can see here excel file is visible now okay suppose I remove the text file okay if I run the script now the text file will not be visible and only the excel file will so you can use this filter if you want like uh, if you have some such requirement where you just want to visible some text file or csv file for your selection so uh, the rest of the things is uh, very simple we have used some uh, if statement else statement that i already explained to you okay if you have any doubt while using this script you can just put into the comment box i'll try to answer that Thank you for watching the video.